So it was around two and a half years ago that I made this video. Why, if I was 10 years old when I first heard this instrument and had an interest, did it take me till the age of 30 to begin learning it? Now, although at that time I just started to learn to play the shamisen, it was always my intention to make more Japanese music related content here on the channel, but I quickly started to realize that it was a lot more difficult than I'd bargained for, and I just really didn't feel confident in my own abilities to make anything that was interesting, and I kept putting it off and putting it off uh, for, you know, a couple of years, and now we're here. So today, I didn't want to get into anything too detailed, but just to give you a brief update of how it's going and my general progress with the shamisen. So I guess we can start off with what I think is the most interesting thing, uh, and that is the fact that I bought a new shamisen. Uh, it's a little bit too long to fit in the frame here. But uh, yeah, this is my new instrument. Uh, technically secondhand, it's not you know new, but it's new to me. Um, and I'd say it's quite a fair upgrade from my previous model. So if I hold them like this, it's probably impossible for most people that are not professional shamisen players to tell the difference between the two. But um, there are a couple of key differences that you can spot, but generally they do look very similar. So let's start from the top of the shamisen here. This is the tenjin, or the, you know, the head of the shamisen. And basically, they look identical probably <laughs> from the front and from the back as well. They look very, very similar. But the difference here, the one thing that you can see, you probably wouldn't know if I didn't tell you, is that the spacing between the uh, pegs here, you can see there's like a gap where you can see all the way through the shamisen. It's just a little bit wider on the new one. Um, and that is because this is a chuzao, which if you watch my previous video, you will know it's kind of a middle sized neck. So we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but generally the whole thing is a little bit wider. So this is a hosozao, which means thin neck, chuzao meaning like middle neck. So other than that, they look very, very similar. I think maybe even they're made from the same wood. So they've got a very similar finish. And the other more obvious, but definitely more superficial difference uh, is that the older shamisen has wooden itomaki and the newer one has uh, ivory itomaki. So you can see that they're white and uh, black here, but the white just stands out a little bit more. Uh, these are considered, I guess you'd say like more professional kind of color. <laughs> they're used more for like um, performances and they just look a bit nicer you know, on stage. If you've got a bit more presence to them. I don't want to get too much into the ethics of uh, ivory, but I did actually look into this um, when I bought this shamisen because I was curious about the ivory trade uh, in Japan. But apparently it's all above board. It's all legally sourced ivory uh, and only comes from elephants that have passed away uh, either in captivity or in like reservation parks in Africa. Or sometimes their tusks fall off from fighting and stuff like that. So they do use those. Um, yeah, I don't want to get too deep into that whole political hole, but uh, it's just a very traditional material to, to make these itomaki out of. And, uh, you know, there's no denying that they do look beautiful. Now, of course, as I said, the other difference is the neck. I mean, this is how they're referred to is Hosozao and Chuzao Shamisen. So that's really the main difference uh, in these two. Basically, the thicker neck, uh, it just gives you more resonance. Um, it's maybe got like a little bit more grip. It's nicer to handle because the thin one just feels a bit too thin. Um, but the, the thicker density of the wood gives you more resonance um, and it's much better for you know performances. It has more body to the tone. And I just honestly think overall it just feels nicer to play. But honestly, it's really, really hard to tell the difference uh, if you don't know what you're looking for. And if you don't have a tape measure to hand, can't remember off the top of my head, but I think the horse was out, it's something like 28 or 30 millimeters wide and the chews out is like 32 millimeters. So it's not a big difference, but you know, when you hold it in your hand, you can definitely feel it. And the last difference here uh, is the door, which is the body of the shamisen. I think this is maybe a little bit easier to see, but the chews out, if I try and line them up here, is actually bigger uh, than the hosso dao. Uh, I think just looking on my monitor there, <laughs> it's kind of hard to line them up, um, but you can see it's probably taller by maybe like two centimeters. Um, and again, just the bigger size, it gives the notes more resonance, a bit more bass. You can definitely hear it uh, if you play them back to back. It, this one just sounds much warmer, much more kind of nuanced in the tone. Um, and this one sounds a little bit more twangy. I wouldn't say it sounds like a toy, but if you imagine kind of like a banjo sound, it's got that kind of high pitched uh, tone to it. Um, whereas, I mean, a, a banjo is not a toy, obviously, but 
the, the correct tone of a shamisen. It really should have a little bit more bass to it because there's a big percussive element to the shamisen, you know, when you strike it with the bachi. So uh, ideally, yeah, you want to have a nice big do to uh, resonate all that sound. So yeah, that's my new Chuzao shamisen. And you might notice how lovely and vibrant this red uh, neo is and also the new dokaki that I've put on here. But actually, when I bought it, it came with this uh, dokaki already on it, which actually does look quite nice. It's quite gold and I think it's a bit harder to see on camera, but it's got quite a, kind of a pink hue mixed in there. Um, maybe not as manly as I would like. Uh, it's got these kind of pink strings. And also it was installed with this uh, pink nail, which is the bridge of the shamisen. And as I think I explained in the previous video, uh, this is basically just a giant knot. It's just made of string and rope. Um, but over time, they do get a bit tired. So if you look at the ends here, this is where the strings are tied. So you can see like um, this kind of a little nobble, nipple shape on the end there, where they get kind of crushed in the middle by the tension of the string. But basically as the strings get pulled, um, you know, over time, over a couple of years or so, uh, they do start to fray and just get a little bit tired looking. And because the color of the nail generally matches the color of the door khaki, I decided to change them both at the same time. Now that's not to say that you have to have matching um, nail and door khaki. I just thought they look really cool in this very vibrant, brilliant kind of red here. So it's quite hard to get the perfect uh, angle where the light can see it properly. But as you can see, it's a very nice, vibrant red. And you can see the similar color here in the door kake with these really lovely uh, like silver cranes, Japanese cranes called uh, tsuru, which is the name in Japanese. But these birds kind of uh, you know, stitched into the, the pattern here. So it looks really, really cool. Uh, it's very Japanese vibe. And just for extra grip, I've got this, um, this rubber here. Before I had uh, one that was kind of stuck on, it was like a little patch, but this actually wraps around the whole thing. So it kind of provides coverage across the whole width of the door kake. And one last little point about the uh, the door, actually, I forgot that I stuck on uh, kind of a little adhesive uh, hisogomu here. So uh, hisogomu is like a leg rubber. Um, basically, it sits between your leg and the shamisen. But the one I was using, uh, it's kind of a separate piece of rubber. And I always felt it slipped a little bit. So I stuck this one on here. Then I have the shamisen like this on my leg. And I put another hisogomu between my leg and this rubber. That gives it a lot of grip and it tends not to shift when I'm playing. That was always one of my kind of struggles when I was getting to grips with the instrument. Uh, it's just the general position of holding it. Um, it can be a little bit tricky, I think. Um, and because I'm so used to playing guitar, which you can just kind of play in any position. You can play it lying down, you can play it standing up with a strap. It's, it's a lot more versatile. Um, whereas the shamisen, it's not that you can't play in different positions, but just the general style uh, that I play um, it calls for very good posture. I'm really not used to that. So I felt like having the extra goma there helps that slipping and it stops me having to adjust while I'm playing. Um, and it helps me keep my posture and, you know, looking correct. And as well as the new shamisen, there's also another quite substantial addition to my gear upgrade. Uh, and that is that I bought a new bachi, which is the plectrum for the shamisen. Uh, now clearly this is not the bachi. This is just a very lovely case that the bachi comes in. But again, uh, like everything with shamisen, it's all very traditional. So, you know, you tend to get these cases with these lovely, like, kind of patterns on, uh, made out of this really nice fabric. But if I open this case up, you will see the bachi here. And if I take this little wooden sheath off the end, just designed to protect the tips. So, of course, visually, these bachi uh, have one striking difference, and it's obviously to do with the, the color at the top here. Um, they're a similar size and shape, um, and about the same weight as well, but um, this one obviously looks a little bit different. So my old one to start with uh, is very cheap. It only costs around 4,000 yen, which is about $35. And it's made of solid plastic. Whereas this one, while the handle is still made of plastic, I believe, uh, the top part, which actually strikes the string and is the part that actually matters to the sound, uh, is made of bekko, which is actually turtle shell. And for any of you eagle-eyed viewers there, uh, you might have noticed that uh, this <laughs> bachi uh, has a bit of a blunt end uh, on this side. It's not supposed to, um, but I actually dropped it at one point. Uh, it cracked the end and I just used a file to kind of smooth it off so I didn't cut myself or anything. But both sides are supposed to be uh, sharp like this. So the main reason that I needed a new bachi, maybe even more so than a new shamisen, was the fact that 
the plastic here is very difficult to play with um, because it's cheap, you know, it's good for beginners. But the problem is with the properties of the material itself. Plastic is very, very uh, inflexible, uh, at least in this form um, that they use in these bachi. And the problem with that is that the strings of the chamisen, while they're only made of silk, they're pulled very, very tight. And they do actually provide quite a lot of like kind of resistance and force. So in order to strike through the string, you need something harder than the silk, but it's not too hard. You don't want to push the string too far and get too much travel. So if you think about it like this, uh, with a string on a chamisen, if you picked it down and you hit it like that and it released quite close to its original position, then you don't really have to go back very far to get another hit on the string. But with the plastic, because it doesn't bend, you push it down, you push it down and it keeps going, it keeps going. Eventually it buckles and it does bend a little bit and the string snaps back. But at the point at which that happens, it's quite far away from its starting point. And when I say far away, it's only a couple of millimeters away. But when you're playing and you're doing kind of quick hits in succession, that difference in space can really make a difference in the speed that you're able to play. So the reason that turtle shell is considered the perfect material for this is that it just has the absolute perfect amount of flex. It's really hard to probably see on the camera here, but if you just kind of ever so slightly press down on the edges, with very minimal force, you can feel the edge bending. And when you see it, you know, when you're playing Shamsen, you can actually see the tip of the bachi bend up as you strike down. So this means that when you do hit the string, the release point from the tension is not very far away. You release, the string goes back, and then you come back, and you don't have much distance to travel back to where you started. So when you're doing a hit, which is called a skui, which is basically a, an up stroke, when you go down and you come back, this is a skui. But skui is a very basic technique, and you use it in almost every song. But if you go like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, or down, up, down, up, down, up, the faster you go, the harder it is to get that action. And basically that's a very long-winded way of me saying that um, <laughs> a turtle shell bachi is ideal for playing pieces at the speed that is required for them you know, to be at their original speed. Playing with plastic, it's not impossible, but it's very, very difficult. And I also think that because the plastic is harder, you're more likely to break a string. You know, if you're trying to go fast, you tend to play harder and you're, then you're putting more force into the string and you're probably gonna break it. So yeah, that's my new shamisen, my Chuzao shamisen or middle neck shamisen and my new Beko Bachi, a turtle shell Bachi. Like I say, the differences are not so apparent, you know, visually, but when you play and you've been playing for a little while, you'll really start to notice the differences. And it's those little differences in things like the material qualities, uh, the choose out of the thickness of the neck, the resonance and things like that. It all just sounds um, a lot better, basically. Now, although I already wanted to buy a new shamisen and buy a new bachi, the main reason that I did so uh, recently uh, was that I actually played my first concert. Now this was a very small concert, mind you, and uh, the audience was basically made up of other students from different schools. But it's the first time I've been on stage uh, with a full kimono, a hakama, playing the shamisen in front of people that are not, you know, other students in my school. So that was a pretty cool experience, but my teacher insisted that, you know, I had to have uh, the proper shamisen, you know, to basically make it sound good. Uh, I wouldn't go on stage with a guitar and play a $100 Fender copy, you know, you want to play a, a good instrument. So I'm glad that I invested in that now. And so, yeah, next I wanted to talk a little bit uh, about my experience playing uh, a proper concert with Shamisen. Um, so for me, it was obviously a bit of a milestone. Like I say, I've been playing for roughly two and a half years now. Um, and it's the first time that I've got up in front of people uh, on a stage. I've played in front of people, you know, more, more casually, um, but this was very, very formal. Uh, you know, I had to have a proper kimono on um, and you know it's the little stage is set you go on stage everyone has to be super quiet um, and I don't know it was just very kind of alien to me as someone who's played guitar for 20 years and mainly played rock so you know the general image of rock is it's a bit rowdy you're kind of thrashing around there's no real rules to it right um, maybe for anyone out there that's played a classical instrument and has trained as part of a bigger band or an orchestra you might be able to appreciate the kind of the rules a little bit more, but as far as I'm aware, it's even then it felt a little more formal. Now, the biggest thing to me is that it's just the, the posture that you have to hold when you're playing the shamisen. When you play the shamisen, basically, you want to hold it in a very particular spot on your leg. Your back needs to be straight, your knees together, 
um, your right arm is kind of hung over holding the bachi, and then you basically hold this position for the entire song. Uh, if you're not playing anything, you just hold the neck towards the top here. I mean, you, you can hold it anywhere really, but you hold it um, and just don't move. And the other difficult thing that I still kind of struggle with because I'm so used to it, is that people don't nod their heads or tap their feet or anything like that um, with traditional Japanese music. It's a lot more uh, kind of in the feeling. You know, there is obviously a tempo, but the tempo changes quite often. And you generally just need to be like in sync with the rest of the band. So for me, that's quite difficult. I'm very used to like just nodding my head or like counting in my head. Um, one of the pieces in particular that we played, it changes time signature almost every bar. So there's a lot of counting that goes on in your head. And I found that kind of tricky, but I think overall I managed to pull it off. Uh, unfortunately, there's no video of this concert. Like I said, it was very small, although it was a proper concert, but uh, I think I've got a couple of photos here. You can see me uh, on stage and uh, also the whole team of uh, students, including my teacher who played together in a concert. So yeah, overall the concert was a lot of fun, um, but I would be lying if I said that I wasn't nervous uh, just before we went on stage. I've obviously got quite a fair experience playing guitar on stage, but I am much more confident with the guitar. Um, I know that I can probably get through most things without making too many mistakes. And I'm just very comfortable with the instrument. But with Shamisen, although I feel like I've made good progress, I'm not confident still. There's so many things that I have not perfected and there's a lot of mistakes that uh, can just happen at any time. So you know, I was a little bit nervous and I didn't want to let anyone else down because you know each time we were playing with Maybe like 15 people as an ensemble. So I didn't want to be that guy that just hit like the wrong note or out of tune or everybody finishes the song and then I play one extra note. <laughs> Something stupid like that. Thankfully there were no big errors like that, but I felt like because I was so nervous, I wasn't playing very uh, strong. I wasn't hitting the, the notes properly. I guess looking back, I was just kind of subconsciously sitting at the back of the mix um, and try not to stick out too much, just in case I hit a wrong note, which is not a good way to play because obviously as part of an ensemble, uh, your job is to fill out the sound correctly. So if there are four shamisen and three kotos and eight shakuhachi uh, flutes, those numbers are there for a reason. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's good to try and play the part properly. So I've actually got another concert coming up in November. Uh, I'm going to practice a lot more for this one. I want to be more prepared, um, but I also want to put on a better show. So uh, hopefully I can get some video of that and I can share it with you guys. Um, but yeah, that was uh, a brief rundown of my first Shamisen concert. And just to wrap up the video, I wanted to share one more little thing with you guys. Uh, and that is the fact that I've also started learning the koto, which is kind of like a Japanese harp. It's a long wooden board with uh, 13 strings attached to it and you kind of pluck them with a clause called sume on your fingers. Uh, and yeah, I've currently had two lessons on it. So I'm not gonna give you a taste of anything like that in this video. I'm very much a beginner and it's quite a lot different to shamisen. Although saying that, it was actually my original instrument of choice. Um, but when I moved to Japan and I thought, oh, I've got the chance to learn a Japanese instrument. I looked into Koto, but then I thought, you know, with all my experience of guitar, maybe shamisen would be the better option. Uh, clearly I was wrong because it's nothing like playing a guitar, um, but I guess there are some transferable skills in that realm. But having had two koto lessons now, uh, I really feel there's an uphill struggle ahead of me. So I definitely want to document some of that progress, um, but I'm just going to need a couple of months first, guys, just to get my head around the basics, and then I'll make a little video to update you on that. And I think that pretty much wraps us up for this video. So if you've got any questions or comments, guys, about Shemisen or Koto, please leave them down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you more about Japanese music. And as always, thanks for watching. Give the video a like if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel for more Japanese music related content. And to see me out, here is a little music. Yeah.